PostHog is a fantastic service that you can use in your Next.js applications in order to capture information about specifically how your users are using your application. However, by default, all of your users inside of the PostHog dashboard are simply identified by UUIDs. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the PostHog identify function with the information that's already built into the Clerk ecosystem in order to accurately identify what your users are doing and tie those actions directly back to your users within Clerk. Now, PostHog already has really good documentation on how to get it added into your Next.js application. So we're not going to start from that level, but what I will do is cover the various components and how they all kind of communicate with each other so you have an understanding on why we're choosing the Clerk functions that we are and why we're placing them where we're placing them. Cooking with Clerk is a relatively straightforward application that acts as a simple AI recipe generator where you can provide a list of ingredients such as chicken, pasta, and potentially a theme like Italian themed. And when you hit enter, what's going to happen is we're going to reach out into OpenAI to request the number of recipes to be sent back to us so this way we can have an idea of what we want to make for dinner tonight. All of this is protected by Clerk, and you can see in the upper right-hand corner, I'm already signed into Clerk using my Google account. Now, over in PostHog, there is this nifty little activity feed which shows you the various things that are happening in almost real time inside of your application. However, the person here is actually only displayed using the UUID as shown in the introduction of this video. So what we're going to do is configure our application in such a way that instead of just capturing the events that happen on the page, we're also going to pull some information from the clerk user record and tie it back to the events so this way we can more accurately see what's going on in our web application. So again, I'm not going to cover the installation and configuration process of PostHog inside of our next application since their docs do a pretty good job of that. But what I will do is step through a couple of pieces of code just to understand what's going on here. So let's start by going in the layout.tsx file, which wraps the entire application and provides kind of a foundation of what's being displayed. On the top level, I have everything wrapped inside of a clerk provider. And then two layers down, I also have this PH provider, which is a post hoc provider. And then even further nested inside of the body is this post hoc page view component. Heading over to providers.tsx, this is simply a provider that is part of the setup process defined on clerk's website. And then also part of that setup process includes the post hoc page view component, which is run every single time a page is loaded within Next. And what this essentially does is trigger an event and sends it off to post hog, which allows post hog to capture the events and render it inside of their dashboard. So truth be told, all of our work is actually going to be done inside of here. Since this component is part of the post hoc setup process and it is run with every single page load, we can use this component to our advantage and integrate a couple pieces of clerk. So essentially what we're going to do is check to make sure a user is signed in and we have all the information we want for a specific user as part of that record. And then if it is, we're going to run the post hoc identify function, which is going to tie that information back to the post hoc event data. So I'm going to start up top here and I'm going to import two hooks from the clerk SDK for next. Use auth and use user. And we'll import those from at clerk forward slash next.js and save the file. Next, let's scroll down into the functional component here, and then we're going to add another use effect down here. Now, this is going to accept two dependencies. The first is post hog itself, just to make sure that post hog is properly loaded. And the second one is user, which is going to be the user object, provided they are signed in using clerk. I'm going to come towards the top of the functional component and finally import that user. So const user is going to be equal to use user. Now, when a user is signed in, this user object will be populated with all of the details about the user that we can use within our application to identify them and how they're using our application. While we're up here, let's go ahead and also add is signed in and user ID, which is part of the use auth hook. Now let's head back to our use effect down here and start checking some of these things. Now we want to essentially check four things. We want to make sure the user signed in. We want to make sure we have a user ID. We also want to make sure that the user record is populated based on the sign in. And then finally, we want to check to make sure that post hog has not already identified the user. Otherwise the identify function will run on every single page load. So we can do this with if is signed in. We'll also check the user ID, the user, and the function we can use from post hog to check if the identify function has already been used is post hog dot underscore is identified. And this will return true if the user is identified or false if it's not. So we only want to run identify if the user has not already been identified. 
And then in order to run identify, it's actually relatively straightforward. We'll type in post hog dot identify. We're going to pass in the user ID, which is the unique identifier for the specific user. And then the object we pass in afterwards is some additional information that can be set for that specific person inside a post hog. So let's go ahead and capture the email address. And that is going to be located at user dot primary email address. I'm going to use a question mark dot just to make sure that that actually has a value. And then we'll type an email address to capture that. And this is part of the user record from clerk. And then the next thing we also want to access is the username in case there is one. So we'll type in username colon user dot username. So if we have a username and not an email address, the username will also be captured and saved to post hog. So I save the file. Let's go ahead back into the browser and refresh our page to see what happens. Back in post hog, here are the person records that are still using UUIDs. Now let's just go ahead and run something one more time. Let's go with uh, rice, beef, and Asian themed and hit enter just to generate a couple more recipes here. Okay, so now that the recipes have come back and we've actually performed some kind of actions on the website, let's head over to post hog. And as you can see by running that identify function, post hog is actually smart enough to know that all of the previous entries that were shown inside of this post hog project were run by the same user. Now, one of the things we've overlooked at this point is how to unset the user in case the person logs off. So let's go back to VS Code and fix that now. Inside of the same use effect, let's add a few more lines and type in another if. And we're going to check to see if the user is not signed in. And we also want to make sure the identify function has been run before resetting it. So I'll also use the post hog dot underscore is identified function. And then inside of this conditional, we could just simply run post hog reset. And this should resolve any potential issues if this computer is used by multiple people will identify each and every user that is signed in using the same computer. So I've saved the code. Let's go ahead and demonstrate this now. I'm going to flip back over to my browser and go back into my application. And let's go ahead and sign out. Now, there's not really much to click on in the application right now, but I can click this little logo here, which will bring me back to the home page. And this will register as a click event. So let me head back into post hog. And now we can see there are a couple more events here that show that Something was clicked on. However, it's not identifying my user as the account that is performing those actions anymore. After watching this video, you should have a better understanding on how you can properly integrate your clerk user's information with the post talk identify function to see specifically what your users are doing on your website. For more information about clerk, go to clerk.com and check out our blog and documentation portal where we are adding new content all the time. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.